one of the premieres that you're showing here at Mac 2024 is the SB16 3 from Star. Explain yep. this machine. Okay, so we brought this machine in. It's a model, model that's been revamped uh, to fill the bottom end of the market for simpler parts. So not everyone needs complex machines with V-axis and all that. So minimal work on the back, for, you know, basically for turning and drilling. Uh, you can do milling on the front end, but it is really aimed at the simple parts. And what's important about a machine like this for your customers? Is it speed, reliability, all of those aspects, and how does this achieve those things? Well, like I said before, it's a proven machine. It's just been updated with all the stripes of control, so it's got the speed, it's reliable, we know that, fast experience, and for a lot of customers with the simple parts, it's going to take very little time to set as well, so brilliant. It's SP23. Now, I've seen this model before, but this is the first time you've shown it at Mac, isn't it? That's right, yeah. We added the open house uh, just back under last year. Uh, what, what, what's different about it? So, again, like one of the other machines, the SP163, the same at the entry level end of the market. However, it does have a high tool count. I was going to say, looking at that kind of diagram there, there's a lot of tools. There's loads. I mean, you've got eight turning tool positions and there's seven like, power tool positions on the main platen alone. So gives customers a lot of options. I mean, it, it might be going back to basics, but the more tools you got, I suppose, the more operations you can do uh, simultaneously as well to reduce cycle times. Yeah, and even potentially if you've got uh, enough tools for you know, multiple jobs, so you could do it a couple of different ways. Um, you've got other models in and around the SP23, so where does this one fit where others don't maybe? Who's this for? So it's uh, the, again, the entry level market, but it's got that handy bar size. So. Yes, it's 23 millimeters. We can do uh, up to an inch bar on this machine as well. Um, and when it comes to the um, flexibility on the tooling and on the axes, what have you got on here? I mean, does it have a B axis? Can it have a B axis? Has it? What? Are, just, just walk me through the configuration. Okay, so there's no light B axis like we have on the higher end machines, but because you've got all these uh, tool positions in here, you can put other tool holders in. So, for example, this machine's got face milling unit. It's got a slotting unit in there. There's all sorts of different tool holders you can put in there to make it as flexible as possible. And what about the cost of this machine when it comes to that? Clear, that's got to be an important factor for people. Yeah, and that was one of the big things for this particular machine. It's giving customers access to a decent machine, lots of tool count without having to spend as much on like the higher end models that we do. So this is our new SD26, so it's uh, an inch capacity machine and there is a lot going on inside. Yeah, it, it, I mean, uh, back end working, front end working, drilling, B-axis, all that kind of stuff, isn't there? Maybe maybe tell us about how this machine is made up and what it's capable of. Okay, so start on the main platen, obviously like you mentioned, there's a full on B-axis there, CNC controlled, uh, all the other um, uh, stations for the power tools are all uh, cartridge units so again you can make it very modular in terms of what you can put in there even on the back ends you know, traditionally our biggest number of tools have been eight stations now we've got ten so you've got your eight standard ones plus two turning tools and the other neat feature on this machine is on the part ejection there's a kit we can uh, front eject up to 160 millimeters so for this size machine that's pretty long and um, what, what, what are you chasing with these machines what are your customers after um, you know, obviously maximum cut time, I suppose, aren't they? It's cut time, but also, especially with this type of machine, complexity of the parts. So, because you've got a high tool count, there's not much you can't do on there. And what about process control, manufacturing parts for, you know, unmanned running for long hours? How do you, how do you tackle challenges? So it's all the technology that we can put inside a machine. Now, as with the other machines, we've got the step cycle bro. Uh, chip breaking technology, so that will take care of all like, the problem materials. This machine's prepped for high pressure coolant, so for any of the uh, features that you need to do, say like deep hole drilling, you can use the high pressure coolant to get rid of the swarf and help with like any kind of like uh, cycle times on that side of things. And do you have anything on your software that uh, enables you to become more efficient and you know streamline manufacturing processes? Yeah, so on our higher end machines, uh, we'll have uh, Star's own optimization software built into the planet control. So it'll create a hybrid program, it'll look to see where all the idle times are and then pre-position the next tool. So great if you're doing long runs. And when you have a machine like this, Matt, and you purchase it, you've got to obviously look for your return on investment. 
you know, how do you how do you convince customers that this type of machine is the one for them? So that will be focused on like the kind of work they're doing. So if they're doing simple parts, it really isn't a machine for them. But if they've got a mix of parts, especially like a uh, subcontractor, this machine, of course, will tackle a whole range of parts, different bar sizes, give them maximum flexibility.